Rapper got another one of them Popping at the mouth or the side of his neck When he pouts, no argument, no rebuttal from He ain't from my town, I don't know him So I'm guessing he's a clown like he wouldn't Welcome to Three Count Commentaries And we'll be discussing WWE and Disney Plus NXT 2.0 from February the 1st 2022. We're also going to talk about some uh, some guys getting to me on Twitter. Got a lot in this show. Can't wait to get to it. But first, got to take care of business. The WWE Disney deal. So I waited until I saw it on Deadline, which was a more reputable news source. And um, here's what it says about WWE and Hot Star. Um, well, apparently what took place was WWE and Hot Star have come in together or Disney Plus Hot Star. That's the technical name of it. They have come together to make WWE Network exclusive to Disney in Indonesia. When people were talking a lot about WWE Network, they were using improper language saying, oh, they sold the network to NBC. You're like, no, they did not. They sold the streaming rights in the United States only. Just how they can have Raw on USA Network in the United States and have it with a different network in Canada and a different network in Australia. They're doing the same thing with the WWE Network where they're licensing it out. And this time they're licensing it out to Disney in Indonesia. So here is uh, some important information. Disney plus Hotstar, which is what they're teaming with. Launched in 2020 and has accounted for more than one third of the 118 million global subscribers of Disney Plus. In hot star territories, notably India, Disney Plus is offered as a low cost add on to the hot star service, which has existed since 2015. Star and hot star were significant access in the Disney Fox deal. From uh, Vinique Piri, he says, quote, or she, maybe, as home of the best global and local language content, we're excited to welcome the extensive library of content from WWE Network to the ever-expanding slates of Disney Plus Hotstar. With this new content on Disney Plus Hotstar, we hope to expand our reach and engage even more audiences in Indonesia. Uh, Nick, Nick Khan says, quote, the Walt Disney Company has long been the gold standard in creating iconic intellectual property that serves as the backbone for international business growth. Partnering with Disney Plus Hotstar will allow us to deliver WWE Network content, including WrestleMania, on a best-in-class platform to our existing fans in Indonesia, while also introducing WWE to new audiences in the region as Disney Plus continues to expand its reach internationally so this is a fantastic deal we don't know how much it's for if it's anywhere in the same neighborhood as the one billion dollars they got for peacock this is a great influx of cash there's no reason to think that it's not somewhere in that area if it was more than that i think we probably would know it's probably a little bit less but it's in the same ballpark gotta be even more important is building a relationship with disney which is important for WWE. Now, I know a lot of people have said, what does this mean? Is this is it possible that WWE one day will be bought by Disney? You know, like it's anything is possible. Um, but WWE is a small company in comparison to Disney. It's small in comparison to NBC, but it is not a small company. WWE is involved with live event touring, a monster in television publishing, film, they have a lot of different divisions. They're doing a lot of stuff. So it's not easy to just buy WWE and just have Disney funding funding the shows. That's not as quite as easy as it sounds. <clears throat> but, you know, who knows? Disney does have live events. They do have live events. They have plays like The Lion King and Spider-Man and stuff like that. So maybe they might want to run it like that. But that's no guarantee that they're even going to buy it. This is just a business deal. Let's not jump too far ahead into, oh my God, it's, it's the beginning of the end. It's like, not really. You know, it's one business deal. It begins their relationship. But it's not that, you know, not that crazy. Besides, WWE and Biz Disney had done some business before. 
when uh, Disney bought Fox, they inherited some WWE contracts with Fox and other countries. They also did some stuff with ESPN, which is owned by Disney. So it's not like this is the first time they've ever done. This is the first thing they've ever done directly with Disney. As far as partnering up with Disney Plus. If they could get into the Disney Plus market. Oh baby. You're talking about mucho dinero. Talking about serious cash. Um, that being said. The one thing that I am concerned about. Is not now that they're doing business with Disney. Is Disney going to want some kind of control? Are they going to want some kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of power play when it comes to WWE? Now, I don't know that much about um, Indonesia. You know, I don't know that much about it. So I don't know what the culture is, you know, what kind of cultural changes they might ask for in terms of butchering the network. Because we know what NBC did when they bought in. They went in and started taking stuff out. Now, you can take an asset if you want and devalue it which I believe NBC has done, which I believe Disney will end up doing. And by devaluing it, what I mean is you, you start changing it. You know, when you start deleting content, you've certain people are going to be like, what are you doing? You're smudging stuff. You're taking stuff off. You know, even if it's offensive, you removing it didn't increase it in value. All you've done is make it, you know, increase the value of people who, um, who are bootlegging it. More people are probably going to watch segments from YouTube now than they would have watched them on the network because you deleted them off the network. So, I mean, that, that's NBC's billion dollars they wasted. I mean, that's up to them. That's, you know, is Disney going to do something similar? That would be my question. My question would be, is Disney going to start asking WWE to delete certain content? Are they going to have a hand in certain creative decisions? You know? That's a good question. You know, you can't serve a hundred different masters. You know, Disney is directly towards now, but we know Disney is a, they don't give a shit about devaluing assets. Look what they did to Marvel. Look what they did to Star Wars. <laughs> you know, they don't give a shit. They pretty much um, put those things in a meat grinder. They've completely destroyed Marvel Comics. They completely destroyed Star Wars. And it is what it is. You know, is it possible that they could do this to the network? In Indonesia, maybe. If you're from Indonesia, I guess you would you would know before I will, because I'll probably never know. But it's a nice little influx of cash here. WWE is making big deals. This was a very necessary, very needed. But um, I think it also states a very important thing is that people keep thinking that wrestling is dead. It's like it's not dead, man. It's slow, sure. You know, you're going to have these uh, sort of bad houses here and there, or maybe even more often than not. But WWE has been the king of when things are not doing well in the United States, because they did this in the early 90s. You just go to Europe, right? You just run more shows in Europe. You got SummerSlam in Europe because things were slow in the United States. So who knows? It could be the beginning of something like that. Where, you know, they might want to start looking at doing more European tours because things are slow in the United States. The economy is shit. But to be quite honest, the economy the world over is trash because of COVID. So, I mean, it just is what it is. Well, not because of COVID, because of government. But let's not go that. Let's not go down that train. I don't want to. I don't want to piss people off. Let's not go down that train. At least not right now. Um, just know that none of this was necessary. So ultimately... When you are in the live event business, when you're in the business of bringing large groups of people together, it's going to be a little bit slower to do so. It's not the NFL, it's not the NBA, but it is in some ways bigger. When you look at, that's what I mentioned on Raw, during Raw Review rather, when they did the TikTok followers, they said, oh, we got more TikTok followers in the NBA and the NFL. And I said, well, WWE is global. You know, NBA, NFL, NHL, those are local. You know, those are national. You know, they're big in the country. So when you see the, the Super Bowl being huge in the United States, nobody cares outside of the United States. You know, so it's like it's very rarely you may hear anybody from Europe or Australia talking about the Super Bowl. But you, you're probably more likely to hear them talk about WrestleMania. But of course, they'll talk about like the World Cup or something like that because that's more their thing. 
So you have to take into account that even if things are dire in terms of TV ratings, um, the world matters too. And WWE is making big deals in the world. I'm talking like, you know, the Saudi deal was huge and it continues to be. And now this Disney deal is another one. It's big money. You know, no doubt big money. So I hate to break it to people who keep saying that wrestling is dead. It's like, I don't know how it could be dead when people are throwing billion dollar checks around. You can say, look, it's, uh, it's not, it's in a slump. Okay. But as long as, you know, somebody's being paid, it ain't dead. Trust me. I'm talking about getting paid serious bucks. It ain't dead. It can't be. <laughs> you don't pay that much for something that's dead. Trust me. That it don't work like that, but it's not. Um, it ain't doing as good as it could be doing. Obviously, it's not red hot on fire, you know. Because if that was the case, you know, it, it, they be making more money than they make now. But they're doing okay. All right, so let's finally get into NXT. It probably took me a little too long to get out of that. So Dolph Ziggler uh, cuts a little bit of a promo after Raw, saying that he may come down to NXT and rob Braun Breaker of his. Of his uh, NXT championship. Um, I'm okay with this. I like this idea. I like the idea of like. Um, Dolph Ziggler coming down. And you know maybe having a little bit of a run. With Brian. I saw a lot of people who were really upset about this. Like they didn't do this kind of stuff. When Adam Cole was here. When 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 so and so was here. It's like those dudes have been in the business 10 fucking years. I mean what are you going to do. Treat them like rookies. I mean, it wasn't that the offensive part anyway. A guy like Finn Balor had been in the business forever. And you got him in NXT. Oh, <laughs> what a joke. But you want to send the uh, the main roster guys down there to work with them? No. You send the main roster guys down there to work with the kids. You know? Not the 36-year-old midgets that, been, that spent 15 years in Ring of Honor. Those aren't the guys you want to spend <laughs> you send your kids to work with. Uh, no, 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 no. You know, I think we're doing it right. But, um, Dolph hasn't done anything yet, but it's a nice little tease. Yeah, it's a nice little tease. I'm okay with it. So, um, as far as NXT is concerned, um, it wasn't my favorite episode. It was kind of cringe, actually, in, in a little bit. In some spaces, it was kind of cringe. In other spaces, it was kind of, uh, dope. But let's, uh, let's get into that. So, uh, NXT, Imperium versus Diamond Mind. Uh, Imperium defeated Diamond Mine when Gunta. I was I really debated whether I was going to go with Gunther as his name or Walter. I'm gonna go with Gunther. Why not? I might as well get used to saying it. He defeated one of the Creed brothers by by pinfall with a power bomb. Very good match. Stiff, hard hitting, fun stuff. Later, um, Bivens was trying to spin this loss, claiming that they're going to run into Imperium again one day. As uh, Imperium uh, is going to be the tag team champions when the Creed Brothers win. And the Creed Brothers will defeat Imperium and become the tag team champions. This led uh, Grizzly Young Veterans to come out there. Uh, <laughs> Bivens called them nerds. And uh, we pretty much all agreed with that. We pretty much all like that. You know, nobody, not too many people take the Grizzly Young Veterans seriously anymore. And probably for good reason. Now, L.A. Knight. So, L.A. Knight, yeah, he is saying that Grayson Waller is trying to avoid the inevitable, but he's got hell to pay, and he's going to drop that restraining order. Joe Gacy saunters over. Joe Gacy says that, you know, reminds, tells everybody, Harland once had a restraining order placed upon him, and it was so unfair, and that he was able to help Harland, so maybe he can help L.A. Knight. And L.A. Knight said, well, okay, look, we, you, we can counsel it out in the ring, and uh, I can kick your ass. So, L.A. Knight versus Joe Gacy. Not a bad match, not bad at all. The crowd really loves L.A. Knight. They're 100% in on L.A. Knight. Uh, Grayson Waller attacks him outside the ring. His gigantic Indian bodyguard distracts him. He attacks him from behind with the rolling stunner. They... Teased that LA Knight was going to lose by the squad by count out, rather. He gets, uh, he breaks the backs into the ring, gets hit with a springboard lariat, and pin Joe Gacy just wins the match. LA Knight loses. 
So Joe Gacy continues to flutter about. They're not really over because they're not in storylines, not doing anything, but they're omnipresent on the roster. So Gacy and Harlan need a feud. They really need a feud because they're, they're dying out there without a feud. Uh, LA Knight, on the other hand, is really getting over, really getting over. Um, Grayson Waller says that LA Knight does not belong in his NXT and that he wants him out of his NXT. I guess they're kind of, um, they're winking and nudging at, uh, LA Knight leaving. So later in the episode, Grayson Waller says that if LA Knight defeats Sangha next week, he will consider dropping the restraining order. And I, uh, I'll be, you know, the middle of your solid exclamation point over the head. I'm like, this is not a good idea. This ain't a good idea. Um, two reasons. One, LA Knight probably shouldn't lose this match. Two, Sanga certainly should not lose this match. You know, you can't, it's too, it's way too early to have your bodyguard get losing matches. It's way too early. Way, way, way too early for that. Way too early for that. So I don't know how we get out of this, but we need to get out of it. We need to get out of it very quickly. Uh, toxic attraction. Uh, <laughs> pretty simple thing here. Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada will be getting their tag team championship match. Gigi Dolan still sounds forced. She sounds like a puppet. Like she's saying somebody else's words. Like she doesn't believe or have faith in anything that she's saying. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Uh, apparently what will happen is they're going to have a tag team championship match for Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada while Toxic Attraction will be getting their vengeance. All right. All right. Then we get a promo battle between Kaylee Ray and Mandy Rose, which was, you know, interesting. Kaylee Ray comes out there saying she just flat out challenged Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose is like, nah, not interested. Not interested at all, actually. Kaylee Ray runs down her uh, resume saying she was champion for 649 days and that um, she was the most dominant women's champion of the modern era. Which, you know, and Mandy Rose was like, I was on set to cover seven magazines. I'm a bikini world champion. Kaylee Ray was like, well, look at you. you, you I was the world champion where you were slipping and falling on your ass at WrestleMania and making out with Otis. And Mandy Rose kind of shot on her and was like, well, look at me now. <laughs> you know, like, oh, you, you're trying to humiliate me. Look at me now. I'm the champion. You're not. You know, and she says probably the most damning words. On the show where she says that she is what women aspires to be and what every man wants. Most importantly, she is what this company wants and needs as champion. And no amount of talent in the world will replace her beauty. Basically, her beauty and her body. Her beautiful, sexy body. Oh, Kaylee Ray didn't like that very much. So she tries to hit poor Mandy with this bat. And you know, Mandy flees because of course she's going to flee. Why, why wouldn't she flee? So she's going to get the hell out of there. Uh, she's going to get the hell out of there. She goes to the most dangerous place on earth. The opposite of Disney World. The NXT parking lot. I mean, it's the ghetto out there. All right? It's the projects. It's guaranteed bad shit going to happen if you're in an NXT parking lot. She a Black SUV pulls up to collect toxic attraction. Uh, Gigi and JC climb in. The window rolls down, and oh my goodness, it is Kaylee Ray driving the machine. And Kaylee Ray makes off with Gigi and JC. They just go away. They're gone. And somehow, they're still gone, and Kaylee Ray has come back. So Kaylee Ray is now returning to chase Mandy Rose all over the building, which leads to. The Malik Blade and into this Eno face scene. Now, NXT is probably, it is the reigning, defending, undisputed, unbeaten, horniest wrestling show on TV. And yet it is not salacious at all. Malik Blade and into this Eno face are workshopping tag team names. And it, they, they tease BBC. They, what was it? What is it? Brave, bold, and confident. 
That, that's what's supposed to be the team name, Brave, Bold, and Confident, Team BBC. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 we're not going to do that. And then he says, maybe we should ask Mandy Rose. And he was like, well, you know, you again with this Mandy Rose stuff. If Mandy Rose was here, what would you, what would you say? And Malik Blade is going through this whole thing about what he would say if Mandy Rose was there. And Mandy Rose stumbles into the room and falls on his lap and he's holding Mandy Rose. And she's like, help me. Help me, please. And she's like, what's going on? And then here comes Kaylee Ray with this bat. Mandy scrambles to her feet and runs away. <laughs> Idris Enofe is so excited, he jumps to his feet and his pecs are just like dribbling on his chest. He's like, I can't wait to go help her. Let's go help her. And Malik Blade is like, wait a minute. I need a minute. <laughs> He's like, what is going on, man? Let's go, let's go. He's like, I need a minute. <laughs> it is clearly a boner joke. And I thought it was hilarious. I, I, it was hilarious. Like, certain parts of NXT is cringe. When they do this kind of stuff, sometimes it's cringe. The uh, Brooks Jensen scene, when he was in there talking about how he want to take his relationship with Caden Carter to the next level, and he was being all hyper-verbal and playing shy brother. Oh, I don't know what to say. I mean, we, we're just best friends, and yada, 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 yada. I'm like, ah, that's whack. That's whack. See, there's parts of NXT that feels like some shit I would have watched on MTV 20 years ago. You know? Like, if you remember shows like Undressed, or something like that would be on NXT, that's kind of... Uh, MTV, rather. That's the kind of shit that they kind of have on, on NXT sometimes. And I'm not 100% appreciative of it. I think that kind of stuff is cringe. But I think that the Malik Blade segment was pretty funny. Because... It wasn't salacious, it wasn't dirty, but it was clearly dirty. Like, you know, it was it was clearly, if you were paying attention, a dirty scene. But it wasn't him standing up with like his giant boner or anything like that. They didn't even mention his dick at all. It's just it's just common sense. Mandy Rose fell in his lap. He had a has a crush on her. He's touching her. You know, and now he, you know, she's gone. And he's like, wait a minute. I need to, I need to get control of myself, you know? So it was nice. It was a nice little funny scene. I didn't have a problem with it. A bunch of virgins online did, because of course they would. It's just, you know, people are sexless and weird, you know? I don't know. Like, how many virgins do you think watch this shit? Too many, I think. There's nothing wrong with a guy wanting a little hanky panky every now and again. You know, he don't want to just jerk the curtain. He want to play in the main event, baby. Why wouldn't he? You know, come on. Come on. Um, anyway, it was pretty funny. So, uh, ultimately, it wouldn't be WWE if somebody didn't get covered in food and other goop. So, what ends up happening here? Uh, Mandy Rose eventually gets covered in cake and spaghetti from catering. She's still chased throughout the building until the after the main event. Then she's in the ring. And uh, Kaylee Ray says, I want my title match next week. And Mandy Rose agrees. Kaylee Ray still beats her up. So Kaylee Ray versus Mandy Rose next week for the women's championship. Okay. Okie dokie. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Kaylee Ray's just going to lose. There's just no reason for Kaylee Ray to be the champion right now. A lot of people have been saying, well, Kaylee Ray is such a good wrestler. I can't believe they're doing this bat thing with her. And I say, look, man, when Kaylee Ray was running shit over NXT UK, you wasn't even watching NXT UK. You weren't even talking about it. You know, nobody cared when she was running shit. You know, I mean, people kill me with that stuff. It's so phony and fake. Like they're doing it right now with Brian Kendrick and, uh, you know, AEW. It's like, oh, Brian Kendrick is going to be on AEW. I'm like, so what? I think the first Brian Kendrick match I've ever seen. The guy's been around for 20 fucking years. I don't care. It's okay. You know, it's, it's a nice thing. Sure, it's nice. But we let's not talk about it like you actually give a shit. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. Really. So, um, all the toxic attraction stuff. And I, I'm just floored by the fact that JC and Gigi never came back. It's like, did Kaylee Ray teleport away from them? How did she manage to escape them? 
How can it be that she was able to come back and they weren't? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm asking too many questions. I don't know. It's the NXT parking lot. So who knows what, what demons or, or, you know, death dealers have, you know, got them and skinned them and ate them or something like that. Who the fuck knows? Right? They could have fallen into the Lazarus pit. And who the fuck knows? Who, who, who knows? I have no idea. All right. So Corey Jade wrestled Raquel Gonzalez. Raquel Gonzalez gave her an opportunity to back out of the match. She said, no, I am going to prove that I am good enough to be her tag team partner. So Raquel Gonzalez beat Corey Jade, but Corey Jade put up a pretty good fight. So Raquel Gonzalez was like, look, I respect her. Let's go out and win this thing. So I said to myself, all right, they have to win, don't they? They're now a tag team. They put them in this storyline to build them up for this match. They've got to win the, the, the thing, right? The Women's Dusty Cup. What sense would it have made to put them in this if they were not going to win? I don't know. Uh, of course, Cora Jade needs to win something. She's been getting pushed for a little while now, but she hasn't won anything. So she needs some accolades. Raquel Gonzalez really doesn't. We've been saying for months now that Raquel Gonzalez is basically just floating around, ripe, waiting for somebody to pluck her and change her theme song and give her a cowboy gimmick or something stupid like that for SmackDown. That's what we're waiting on. So she can do something useful like get Cora Jade over during this time. Okay, cool. But sometimes you don't get people over by beating them. This I saw this is something else I saw people complaining about. Why didn't Cora Jade win? Because she didn't need to win. It wasn't about Cora Jade winning. It was never about Cora Jade winning. It was always about Cora Jade having to prove something to Raquel Gonzalez. And that's what she did. She proved that she was tough and that she could hang in there. And that she could fight. She was a fighter. That's what she proved. Follow the fucking story, you idiot. All right? Idiot. So, Saray, we get an update on Saray. Saray is coming back. And I see people on Twitter, man, they're hand wringing. They're mincing. They're, oh my God, what are they doing to Saray? Uh, they, they, they hate foreign talent. They don't, they don't want to push foreign talent. Oh, they want to try, try, turn her into a smash because cool girl. You got to turn her into Sailor Moon. What's going on? They do a scene where Saray is walking backstage. She's, you know, regular Saray. She's looking not frumpy, but. Not super either. She's kind of normal, super normal. She walks through the tunnel, through one side, through smoke and everything, and she comes out of the other side, Saray, with different hair color. All they did was change her hair color. And all these people who were mincing and whining and complaining and crying, they just changed her hair color. Apparently, she was taken off TV not to change her gimmick because she was injured. She was off TV because she was injured. Oh my goodness. Oh, what, what was all of that about? All these people were fretting. Why can't Saray just be a good wrestler? Why can't you just let, let's let her wrestle, man? It's so, I'm like, you calm the fuck down, please. Why are you sweating? Buffalo wings over this. Chill out. Relax. It's just a gimmick. I promise you, it won't hurt you. All right, so Saray defeats Kayla Inley. No big deal there. Um, love Saray. She's she's pretty good. She's very cute. Don't have a problem with her. <clears throat> um, then she later, she dedicates her win to her grandma. And... She runs into the ghost of NXT Black and Gold, otherwise known as Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai, I mean, we might as well just call uh, the Ghostbusters to come and get her out of that building. Because Dakota Kai is just floating around that bitch. I don't know what she's saying. I don't know why she's saying it. She's not involved in anything. She's just kind of floating around there, pointing at people and twitching and shit. I'm just kind of like, I don't know, man. Like, we need to have an exorcist or something like that to get this bitch out of here. All right? She got to go. One way or the other, she got to go. Either do something productive or get the fuck out of here. All right? One or the other. Make a decision. Right? So, <laughs> she had words with Dakota Kai and um, Saray's necklace started to glow. Apparently, they're doing some kind of trick with the necklace where it glows. 
And um, I'm like, okay, I can see this is very cute. I can see I can see it being a merchandising thing. WWE loves their merchandise. So maybe they'll find some some way of merchandising Saray's necklace. And maybe if she really catches on and she really gets over, it can it can be, become a big seller. She can make some money off that thing. I'm not as, you know, torn up about her being a magical schoolgirl as everybody else. Because it's, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I was expecting some really hardcore Sailor Moon shit. That's what I was expecting. All they really did was have a pre-taped entrance that lead like it's basically an elongated entrance. They pre-tape her walking through the back. She walks out and she comes out in her regular gear. That was it. That was the extent of the magic. So I was kind of like, I can, I can, I can deal with that. You know, that that was nothing. That's not even a pinprick. I can, I can respect that. Doesn't, that doesn't draw blood, right? That doesn't draw blood. It's it's cool. It's cool. Go ahead, do your thing. You know, have fun with that. I don't mind that. Uh, so our boy Duke Hudson says he was addicted to gambling. Now he's only addicted to making people suffer. And it didn't have to be Dante Chin. It just happened to be. And I said, look, ah, I don't know. Duke Hudson was far more interesting than Evolve. He was interesting in Evolve. Um, he's not interesting now, though. I don't know. Maybe he needs to go away for a while. Maybe go let his hair grow back or something. Pete Dunn says that he took advice from Tony D'Angelo's cousin, Tulio. I handle my business by any means necessary. And anyway, he challenged Tony D'Angelo to a steel cage match. That's a big thumbs up. I don't have a problem with that. Good job. Um, is that going to be at Vengeance Day or is that going to be at an episode of NXT? Either way, it's a good match for Tony D and he should win. Um, next. Is he got Tommaso Ciampa? He's hanging around with our boy Brian as Brian loosens up for their match, their big main event match against Legado del Fantasma. So Ciampa reminds Brian that he told him that it's lonely at the top, but you don't know that until you get up there. So now Brian is at the top. Now he knows how lonely it is up there, and says that he has a vested interest essentially in keeping Brian with the NXT title. Which we already know the reasons for that. He's going to want his rematch eventually, right? All right. Sweet. No problems. Main event. Legado del Fantasma versus Tommaso Ciampa and Brian Breaker. Legado del Fantasma represented by Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde. Speaking of Joaquin Wilde, man, he sure ate that damn table, didn't he? Man, that table exploded. And he didn't come back. That's selling, of course. Um, if you're working in AEW, you wouldn't know anything about that. Uh, the finish comes with Brian just absolutely wrecking Raul Mendoza with his, uh, with his finish that still goes unnamed. And, uh, Mendoza was down so long from that finish. I'm talking not moving. That I basically said, man, the ref needs to do something. <laughs> the ref needs to call somebody. Cause Mendoza was flat and he didn't move. He didn't like roll out of the ring and typical heel fashion or nothing. He used his dear did he sold it like a gunshot to the head he sold that bitch like jfk sold that bullet you feel me he ain't move good job mendoza really put the kid over good job if it wasn't for kaylee ray and mandy rose i would have said they probably need a little bit more time to finish whatever story they was trying to tell here but since it doesn't seem like brian and escobar are going near uh a match yet they're probably going to let this drag a little bit more and since Kaylee Ray and Mandy Rose are actually going to have their match next week, okay, I, I I agree with letting Mandy and Kaylee Ray take the top spot, the last segment. So it was all right. We didn't get a lot of Brian this week. Didn't get a lot of Champa, but we got some. You know, we got some. We got enough, and the match was pretty good. All right. So Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, they come out there. They just put a smile on my face. Everything they do is funny. I don't I don't need to see them do too much of anything for me to laugh. To be quite honest. And Trick Williams gave me everything I was looking for in this in this segment. He just chews up all the real estate when he's around. You know, he's just he's just chewing up all the real estate. So uh Carmelo Hayes says that the people don't take Cameron Grimes seriously. But he does. And that's why he's gonna go harder in the ring. He's gonna go harder in the gym. He's gonna spend more time with Ollie J, which leads 
Trent Williams would be like, Ollie J. And he was like, Ollie J. <laughs> so he says he's taking Cameron Grimes seriously. Cameron Grimes comes out there, cuts some really fail jokes about SpongeBob and his, you know, uh, his head look like SpongeBob's house and Trick Williams is, you know, Squidward. I was like, ugh, this is awful. This is awful stuff. We didn't need this. What we did need and needed more of it was Trick Williams going off. He called Cameron Grimes, I believe, a low down, raggedy, slow footed bum, which had me doubled over in laughter. Man, I was laughing so hard at this. This dude is <laughs> fucking great. And then he he <laughs> he hit the greatest hits where he called it. We, we called his daddy something. His mama's a bootlicker, and he <laughs> just kept going. And Cameron Grimes was like, "What?" <laughs> He's like, "I'm not wrestling him, or I'm wrestling you." And he was like, uh, he called him a bum again. <laughs> Trick Williams has so much personality that he is overwhelming everybody that he's on screen with. I'm saying his swag is high. Carmelo Hayes is going to have to step it up. Otherwise, everybody's going to be talking about Trick Williams. I mean, look at what happened in this segment. In this segment, Cameron Grimes came out there and everybody was supposed to be chanting to the moon. That's what his promo was was uh, featured around. The fact that he would be chanting, people would be chanting to the moon. Now, there were some people chanting to the moon. Other people were chanting, whoop that trick. Now, I don't know about you, but the whoop that trick crowd seemed to be a little bit louder than that to the moon crowd. And uh, it was kind of embarrassing, if we be honest. <laughs> you know, it was kind of embarrassing. But... I love Trick Williams. I'm not in any way ashamed of that whatsoever. I'm not ashamed of that at all. So Robert Stone has said that he leaned too heavily into the performance part of the business, well, the entertainment part of the business, until he saw Von Wagner destroying guys and attacking people. Now he wants to be in the Von Wagner business, and he paid all of Von Wagner's fines, and he will continue to pay Von Wagner's fines, as Von Wagner is going to ruin people's lives and such and such. And I was like, I don't believe none of that. I don't believe none of this. Von Wagner ain't buying it. Dude is a got the charisma of a toadstool. I don't believe him. All right, you don't need more of that. You gonna need a little bit more, okay? But uh, he apparently is still involved with Andre Chase. So let's talk about Andre Chase. So. Draco Anthony apparently hangs out at the performance center at 2.30 in the morning. Apparently, they don't have locks on the doors at the performance center. They don't believe in actually cleaning up things. You know, janitorial services, no security guards. Just got random guys popping up at 2.30 in the morning to hit the gym. Draco Anthony. Student of Booker T, former Marine. Probably not one of the kids. Probably a little bit older. He's he's got a match with Andre Chase. Andre Chase, of course, is hard on bravado. He's a fucking bum, but the Andre Chase character rules. All right, the Andre Chase gimmick with the crowd and everything that is like going crazy. They got flags and all that. The energy of Chase University is great. Too bad is for fucking hard on bravado. All right, he fucking sucks. And then Draco Anthony is making his debut. He gets no introduction. And he loses to somebody who never wins. Andre Chase literally never wins. But he won this time. And this is what made me laugh so hard. Draco Anthony has the Chase U flag. And he's not quite sure what to do. He threatens to stomp it with one leg. Which would have made a lot of sense. Then he doesn't do it. He looks like he's going to snap it over his knee. He doesn't do that either. And then he stomps it with his inside leg, which I think would be his left leg. And he's kind of grinding it under his boot. The chase you flag, I mean. It gets huge reaction. Boo. Andre Chase pops up, beats the tar out of him, and then beats him with his finish. And I was like, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. 
is that, is that how we treating this guy? We give him vignettes to start his, his career and he take him a loss? Now, I know how WWE gets down. I watched NXT enough. I've seen this shit. We know that there are storylines built in these losses. We know that. WWE is very heavily reliant on the storytelling method. It'll probably be, you know, some type of teachable moment for Draco Anthony. He'll learn something. He'll probably end up teamed up with somebody or something like that. And that's going to be the beginning of his storyline. WWE tends to do that when they really want to push somebody. They kind of beat them first to get the losses out of the way. So that, you know, it won't look like they're just paper, you're beating everybody all the time kind of stuff. They think it's more interesting to beat people than, you know, and sometimes for them to be 50-50 than it would be for one side to be dominant over the other. It's stupid, trust me. But sometimes it works. In this instance, Draco Anthony looked like a chump because we did all these vignettes and everything. And we talked about how hard he worked. And then afterward, like maybe he should have stayed until 4.30 in the morning. Maybe he needs to show up at the performance center at 12 o'clock. You know, just as everybody's going to sleep. Maybe he needs to actually do some work when the trainers are there. I doubt any trainers are there at 12, 2 in the morning. I, I don't know, man. Maybe Norma Smiley will show up and, you know, help him go through some drills at 2 in the morning. I don't see too many other people doing it. He's in there lifting the weight. Now, he is jacked. I will say that he is looking jacked. But take a look, it's going to take a little bit more than that, dog. Now I'm gonna, it's a job match, so I can't see too much out of him. Uh, I know he's been on 205 Live. I, I don't watch 205 Live, though I have been tempted to. I have been tempted to, but I, I've avoided it. I've avoided that shit like the plague, bruh. Avoid that shit like the plague. All right. There's, there's got to be some more stuff for me to talk about. Um, Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada are thinking about their tag team championship and they run into um, Mincing Shaw brother Brooks Jensen who wants advice on how to talk to Caden Carter and he's super hyper verbal about oh we're just friends and we, I just want to take her out to the picnic and hold her hand maybe if I could just hold her hand maybe I could just touch the hem of her garment I'm like ugh get this beta male shit out of here this is the kind of shit that I don't like All right, this shit is whack this is the type of stuff you see on MTV you know, dudes who are completely and totally unsure on who they are. You know, it's like it works in that frame and MTV back in 1999 because it's like that's kind of how teenagers are. But Brooks Jensen, I know he's a young guy. He's only like 20. But in kayfabe, he's a, probably a little bit older because he's been drinking beer and shit. Right. So I don't see him being shy brother, mincing and being weird. I, I don't like that. It's not cool, as far as I'm concerned. So, I have no interest in, in this. Um, plus, you know, and Caden Carter's pretty cute. I can understand why she might be uh, a little, uh, have you a little nervous. But, nah. This is whack. It's, this is beta male stuff. Beta! Alright, so what we got left, we got Amari Miller and Wendy Chu. Alright, so Tiffany Stratton got beat by Io Shirai, the, I think, either last week or the week before last. Tiffany Stratton runs into Wendy Chu, who says, hey, don't worry about it. Everybody loses to EO. Not Wendy Stratton. Wendy Stratton. Goddamn. Tiffany Stratton is on the war path against Wendy Chu. She approaches the most baby face of all baby faces, Amari Miller. If you've ever heard of Amari Miller's theme song, you can't be a heel with that theme song. Shouldn't even be aligned with heels with that theme song. But... Tiffany Stratton walks up to Amari Miller and says, hey, NXT 2.0 is for athletes and not for disgusting, gross pajama people with bad hair. I will send you on a shopping spree if you take out Wendy Chu. Now, Amari Miller didn't say yes. She did say, I'll consider it. I'll think about it. But then she did take her money. So Amari Miller, I guess, is the foot soldier of a heel at this particular point. I think you should have picked somebody else. Amari Miller is too much of a baby face. So Wendy Chu versus Amari Miller, that's the match. Wendy Chu, and I mean this n n with no hyperbole whatsoever, has the best theme song in the business. It is 
the best. Since NXT decided to go 2.0, the most impressive thing to me is that they found out the power of 808s. It's like somebody heard all that garbage ass driving metal. Now it's the, the metal is so bad. The guitars and everything, it's just generic guitars. It's, you know, really no rhythm, no, it's not a song even. It's just music. It's just stuff playing. It's just stuff together. Like the Shayna Baszler theme is awful. It's absolutely awful. The Liv Morgan theme is awful. It's awful shit. The new music is, is awful. And what makes it awful is it's so generic. But when you listen to the NXT 2.0 themes and you're just hearing the, the melodies and the bop with the bass and everything too, you're like, whoa, this is new. This is, you know, I know that hip hop is now the, Number one music genre on planet Earth, you know, but this could be, you know, uh, WWE's future that we're going to start doing hip hop themes and I'm all for it, you know, as long as we keep maintaining the power of the 808. Now, sometimes we need to keep the metal thing for certain characters like Shayna Baszler, like Rhea Ripley. We need to kind of have that driving guitar, you know, something a little harder edged, but Wendy Chu has a fantastic theme. I love her theme song. I, I, God damn. It was great. Now, I finally paid attention to her match here. Um, now, when it comes to outside the ring, the uh, chicanery, comedy stuff, I can deal with it. Inside the ring, my bar is very, very low. All right. It's very low. And, Wendy Chu got real close to it when she fell asleep on Amari Miller's leg. I was like, you know what? If it's going to be that kind of party, take your bitch ass home. But she was explosive. She was quick. She's a trickster character. I kind of figured it out pretty fast. You know, she lulls you into a false sense of security thinking that she doesn't take the match seriously, that she's sleepy, that she's tired. Or whatever the case may be. And then she busts out some really quick stuff on you. And some high impact stuff. Like she's doing like over the head suplexes and shit. And you're like whoa. Alright. You're showing levels to this character. You're showing this character has dimensions. You know. You just you know, She looks ridiculous though. She's wearing a onesie. With like what is it teddy bear shoes or something like that. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. But I get it. You know I, I, I get it. So after she defeats Mar- Amari Miller, um, Tiffany Stratton gets in the ring and is completely and totally berating Amari Miller for losing. She demands that Amari Miller return her credit card. And then we find out that Wendy Chu has taken it. Wendy Chu has taken a- Tiffany Stratton's credit card. And is probably going to go buy some hotel rooms to get some good night's sleep. All right. Now, as far as Wendy Chu... On the main roster, she has some potential. I can see them trying to really merchandise that character. Sleep masks. That's the first thing I saw when she came out of the shoot. She was wearing a sleep mask. Like, they're going to personalize sleep masks. Watch. They're going to get, like, Wendy Chu personalized sleep masks. It may even do a personalized body pillow because she does carry a body pillow. They may even do personalized Wendy Chu pajamas. This character could, in theory, if done correctly, make a ton of money on merchandise. That's just me looking at it. I can see them selling all of that stuff. You know, all of it based on this gimmick. I can see him doing it. Now, with the, how would the character work? Well, she would be basically a comedy character. You know, she wouldn't be a serious threat to any championship. They'd basically be doing the same thing they're doing on NXT. They'd probably be putting her in situations where she's sleeping in the crowd. She's sleeping under the ring. She's sleeping at the commentary booth or something like that. Just to keep her on TV. But, so I really want to know what's the legs of this character. Because, like, after, like, a year or so of it, people are going to kind of get tired of it. It's going to be ready for something else. So, you know, I'm glad she got the second gear at the very least, where she can actually go in there and work. But um, the character has a lot of merchandise opportunities, and she does have some charisma. So, I guess, 
I guess I'm not giving it a pass, but I'm just kind of saying I see the potential there. I can see where, you know, somebody might see some money in, in Wendy Chew. But speaking of money, and this is last, but most certainly not least, Nikita Lyons. Now, let's, I know, I was told several weeks ago, Mongo, you're going to have a new cherry lip paw goddess. I said, sir, no, sir. There can only be one cherry lip paw goddess, and that's little Miss Tony Storm. But I will see what you have to, to offer. Somebody sent me a picture of Nikita Lyons wearing blue. And I said, my God, what is this? What alien creature is this? That, that ass made me Google that broad. You understand what I'm saying? You know what it takes for me to care about a women's wrestler? I saw that. I saw them cheeks. I was like, wait a minute, brother. I Googled her and I saw her. I think it was uh, some wild women's wrestling vignette. And they was talking about how she was in the entertainment business and she was a singer. She was a dancer. She was a video girl. She did. She was doing martial arts. I was like, wow, this girl got some talent. I, hey, you know, let's let's see what she got here. And she's not. She's a little bit more than booty. OK, cool. I like that. I don't mind booty. I don't mind, mind her being a little bit more than booty either. All right. So. Her stock with me went way up. You know, she was ahead of the curve. But she got all the curves. You feel me? So, ultimately, I was waiting on my big booty nunchuck broad. I was waiting on that. I was waiting on my big booty nunchuck girl. Okay, so I was like, okay, where's my big booty nunchuck girl? I see the vignette. I'm like, okay, brother, here we go. We off and running. And then she says... My dad was a bassist, and my mom was a beautiful groupie. I was like, wait a minute. All right, you know, <laughs> let's keep going. She says that she lived in a van, traveling from town to town as her dad did gigs, and that some people would say that she learned about life from degenerate musicians. And then she started to talk about her truth, and she rapped. And I put my head in my hands and says, where is my big booty nunchuck girl? Where is my big booty nunchuck girl? Where is the girl I saw in the Matrix outfit? Where did she go? Where did that go? I want... My big booty nunchuck girl. Okay. That's what I want. That's what I ordered. I was sitting back patiently. Not saying nothing about Nikita Lyons. I wanted everybody to think that I hadn't seen it yet. I was like. I'm a kayfabe this shit. Never let them. I'm not going to sell it. I'm not going to sell that I seen Nikita Lyons already. Not even going to sell it. And then. NXT presents me with this shit. And I was greatly disappointed. Greatly disappointed. This is awful. This is an awful vignette. Like, this is bad. This is very, very bad. Please do the young chuck thing. Do the martial arts thing. You know, show that you can do some kicks and shit. That'll get people's attention. No, she's singing. I'm like, music? More music acts? No, 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 no more music. No more of that. Big booty nunchuck girl. Was the, that was the right move. That was the right. That was the flex. That's all you needed. Big booty nunchuck girl. Damn it. He fucked it up. But it was only the first vignette. So I tweeted that out. Do -do -do -do. Nikita Lyons. Not doing so good. It's only her first vignette. I had no idea. That I was hitting the wasp net. I had no idea. Some dude. Two dudes actually. Two panty sniffing sons of bitches. You need to go away. That was a great vignette. Her song is awesome. I was like wait a minute. That song sucked. Now 
I'm predisposed to like big booty nunchuck girl. Okay. I want big booty kill bill. I don't want this. I don't want whatever that is. That's horse shit. That shit needs to go away. That's music gimmick. No more music gimmicks. Bring me the big booty kung fu broad. That's what I want. I, it was only the first vignette. I criticized it lightly by saying, it's only the first vignette. Why do sending me DMs? Sending me DMs. Defending the key to lions. I'm like, oh my God. What is, what is going on here? I thought like, I was, I was, at, I was, I was lost. I'm like, my goodness, brother. I'm behind. <laughs> I'm behind. You, you're very angry at me. Look, I'm sorry. I'm, I, like I said, I'm predisposed to like, you know, big booty nunchuck girl, man. But come on. This ain't not. No, that was whack. That, that vignette did not show all of what she can do. She was singing and rapping and it wasn't good. That's the worst thing about it is that it wasn't good. All right. If it was okay, I would have said it was okay. But the booty will cover up just about anything. But that if she's going to be doing rap and all that kind of shit, I'm going to watch them motherfucking matches on mute. All right? Not pass. Hard pass on music gimmicks. But man. Then, then the guy had nerve to tell me, believe it or not, like I give a fuck. Uh, that's her real life. This is a shoot. I'm like, man, I don't give a... This is kayfabe world, man. I don't fuck about that being her real life. Look at me. Look at... Do I look like somebody who gives a fuck about that? Do I sound like somebody who gives a fuck about this... Whether this being her real life or not? I don't give a shit. The point of all of this is to maximize star power. If nothing else, she's gonna... She's gonna roast your fucking almonds. If, if she can't work a lick, it won't matter. Because when you see her, you're going to be like, oh my. You're going to start sweating. You're going to need a minute. You're going to need several minutes. If you see this broad moving around, I've seen some videos of this chick, man. I was just kind of like, what on earth? Where did she come from? What kind of alien is this? And this is what NXT puts out there. The worst possible version of Nikita Lyons. I was floored in the stupidity. Before, and now, and other people were like, she called her mama a groupie. I was like, I don't give a fuck about that. Her mama was a groupie, maybe. Her daddy was a bassist, maybe. I don't know. This was the worst possible version of Nikita Lyons they put out there. I, I didn't see her match on 205 Live, but I know it existed. Because I saw her in the tight blue outfit. And I said, my, ooh, I don't want to spoil it. This was a long time ago, too. So, I was like, okay. But, they did not show her and her best assets this week. And I'm not saying she should walk through the building ass first. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, she's a martial artist. Martial arts, pro wrestling, that works. She looks great. She can do the model thing. They leaning more into the singing and that stuff. That's a miss, dog. Miss. Not good. Lean more into the martial arts. You know, when she comes out in a gi or something. Like some booty shorts. And she spin kicks somebody. That's what I want to see. You know? When I saw her with them nunchucks, I was like, that's the gimmick. That's the fucking gimmick. That's your story right there. How do we get a thick mama with nunchucks? Fuck you. Nobody else is doing that. How many other people are singing and dancing around this motherfucker? Just about every other motherfucker around here is singing and dancing. How many people got kicks like that and can fuck around with nunchucks? Nobody. She jumps off the fucking screen with that. Put the right gimmick on her. Shine her up real nice. You got a star, man. These motherfuckers decided to go singing gimmick. And try to turn her to Kelly Clarkson or some shit. Nobody wants that. No, this ain't America Got Talent. No, no, no. He dropped the ball. Fucking Shawn Michaels. 
Come on, man. Fix this. Next time I see Nikita Lyons, she better be kicking something. I'm, I'm saying kick something. Nunchucks or something. I don't want to see microphone. I don't want to hear no more about her hippie daddy. I don't care. Show me the show me the karate stuff. Like we know we got she we know she got a history in wrestling because she was on Wow. That doesn't mean she was very good, but at least she has some history of wrestling. We know she's very young. We know she we know she's fine. The girl fine. That's all we need to know. We don't need to know all the the nuts and crannies and how the sausage was made and everything. We don't need to know that. She don't want her dropping no hippie knowledge on me. I don't want none of that either. Fix this, Sean. Please. Please. I have to send this man an email. You cannot fuck this up. You dropped the ball with Cherry Lit Paul Goddess. You can't fuck this one up, too. Big Booty Nunchuck Girl is a fucking home run. It's, it's the best of both worlds, man. You can't fuck it up. All right. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, donate to the channel. Thank you guys for your time. I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace.